Hi uh, guys, it's Overclocking TV. We are now in uh, Taipei 101 and we are with uh, Intel guys. It's really important for us to have this uh, interview and we'll talk mainly about uh, desktop CPU. So hello, welcome uh, to, to our videos. Just uh, present yourself, explain what is your job, what you are doing, and then we'll have some more questions about uh, CPU after. Absolutely, thank you very much. Um, my name is Chris Tobias. I am the marketing director uh, for the worldwide desktop channel business. And basically, for those of you that buy Intel CPUs in a box, that's uh, my product and what I drive around the world. The way Intel looks at the roadmap for desktop is we want to uh, create products that are designed specifically for uh, customer segments. Um, before we de design our desktop segment, we kind of designed to get as many people CPUs as possible. Um, so this requires some experimentation in the market. And one of the nice things about China is we have specifically box CPUs for that market, and we want to run a pilot to see what the kind of uptake would be in that uh, space. We actually learned a lot of things, and we put those learnings into our uh, current uh, products for Worldwide. Uh, one of the things we did learn is people want higher end SKUs than the one we brought out in China. Um, so that's what we've made to the available to the Worldwide market. And they should be plenty available in uh, Canada, the U.S. Uh, we were even we had day one sales in Thailand, Brazil, uh, all over the world. So overclocking is not just something that is a Western Europe, a North American phenomenon, or Taiwan or Japan. The typical markets we think of this, everybody around the world is participating in this market. So Intel is pursuing a strategy of TikTok, and uh, what TikTok means is we're going to have the best products out in the marketplace at a given price point. Um, so this does mean sometimes we're going to have to make some platform changes in order to get uh, the best performance out there. So the relentless pursuit of excellence, that's, that's some of the uh, changes we've made. I can say in the longer term, we are getting our architecture uh, more to a place where we're, we're very happy with it and we think it has some, some longevity. Um, so in the longer term, uh, you'll probably see uh, less of this. Sandy Bridge will be an 1155 pin socket. Uh, it's, one, it's one pin uh, less than uh, uh, the current uh, uh, Linfield and Clarkdale processors that we're shipping today, the Core i5 and Core i3, uh, 1156 socket. Um, the changes are actually more complex than just one pin. Um, we did that so the market will know it's different. Um, but we've redesigned the whole processor as part of TikTok, which will make it the uh, uh, best price performance at any given uh, part of the roadmap. But the, the good news is the physical socket uh, remains the same, so all the industry players that produce those sockets, uh, f you know, for our for the motherboard companies that produce uh, Intel boards like Gigabyte, um, the prices uh, should be better than when they first launched on, for example, with P55. Uh, so for the customer base out there, uh, it should mean uh, it should mean an easy transition uh, for the easier transition for the new technology. You know, you know that's a great. Uh, great question. We ask, we, you know, we offer a variety of parts at uh, given price points. Um, to be honest, uh, a lot of uh, customers want to buy in within a certain brand, uh, so they'll, they'll stretch to buy within the brand. Um, so today, our, our market model kind of works like that anyway. So there's some people that buy at the top, um, but the majority of the people will buy into the brand. Uh, you know, they're choosing between brands and buy into the brand. Um, so when we look at it from our unlock SKUs, that's why we offered a, both a Core i5 and a Core i7. It also gives uh, two different experiences. With a dual core, you can actually get very, very high uh, clock speeds. Um, you know, just because of the uh, you know the thermals work out better uh, for that kind of design. Uh, with a quad core, you can get the uh, you know great overclocking plus you know the the uh, the four cores and the eight threads um, on that design. So. We're trying to hit the different segments of the marketplace, um, you know. But when we go to market in this, we also have to be conscious of uh, what SKUs our distributors want to carry, what SKUs gaming integrators want to build, which SKUs our DIY customers want to build. And the interesting thing is, um, you know, even though you said earlier you'd fly to China get a get a part, not everyone has that that wherewithal. So the SKUs that people want in uh, Buenos Aires. Argentina might be different than in Istanbul, Turkey. Um, so we want to make available uh, different roadmaps and distributors will make their choices of which ones to carry. 
you know, we, we have we have the capability uh, to offer different SKUs as the uh, as as the marketplace wants. Um, one of the things that was important for us was to bring the unlocked capability further down the roadmap, and that was the number one thing we wanted to do um, at this point in time. We're evaluating, uh, you know, for the second half of the year. Um, what, how we how we should look at in response to the uh, uh, customers in the segment. One interesting thing, though, is we've been able to drive significant growth in the enthusiast market, which is really really exciting uh, to bring more and more people into this segment. Uh, we have seen significant growth at the uh, Core i5 and 750 uh, processors and above year over year. So we want to make sure our, our number one. Uh, um, decision-making criteria in this process is how we grow the market, how we expand it into other regions, and that's going to be uh, um, focuses on customer responsiveness. So we want to make sure if people made an investment, if they bought a P55 or an X58 board, uh, and if they bought a processor to go with it, they can get a great experience with it, and then if they want to upgrade it later on, uh, we'll have interesting parts uh, for them to, to look at in the future as well. So first of all, um, when when uh, for those of you who've seen a, a wafer of silicon, but it looks like a big disk, um, uh, we always build the same kind of processors on on one piece of silicon. Um, so we, we make a decision on which kind of processors we want to build on the silicon. Um, so for example, if we're building uh, Bloomfield uh, CPUs, a processor that might appeal to your audience, um, we put the, all those on that wafer. Uh, but what happens is uh, is when we send that wafer to test, uh, some of those CPUs will be faster than others, and that's how we uh, skew them out um, uh, for our customers. And uh, that way, uh, we can have different uh, different uh, variety of, uh, of price points. Um, and we always, we always focus on tweaking our processes uh, you know, to make sure we can get the highest performance parts and making sure uh, we get plenty of working processors to fulfill the demands of our customers. I'd like to thank uh, Overclocking TV for having me on the on the program today. Um, Overclocking TV, I, I love the message that you're spreading out there. Um, hopefully, uh, we'll have some of these future overclockers uh, pursue engineering further. Maybe one day work at Intel and help us develop uh, even better products. Um, but honestly, I think it's it's great. It's it's great to see. Uh, we see a lot of uh, younger people get involved in overclocking and. Um, the, the really cool thing about it is uh, the advancement of technology depends on people willing to tinker with the tools out there and push them to the limit and do new things with them. And it makes everybody uh, in the market better. It uh, makes everybody's experience better. So I really, really think this is uh, uh, fantastic. And I love what uh, Overclocker TV uh, does uh, for the marketplace.